What we're seeing here is the logo for West Side Story, the classic musical by Stephen Sondheim. The musical was very innovative in that it was set in an urban setting, particularly the urban ghettos of New York City. Its rough urban setting was reflected in the logo in the way that the typeface looks like it might have been painted roughly onto a sidewalk and worn away over time. This technique is called distressed typography, and this was the first time that it was ever done. But today, we see this type of distressed typography all the time. We can achieve this effect quite easily in Illustrator using photographs of textures. We just need to do a little bit of preparation first. Let me show you some other examples of some illustrations that use texture masks and texture overlays. You can see that in this image, I've used photographic textures to create a chipped paint effect. In this file, I've got a grainy white texture sitting over top of my Victorian typography demo. In this image, I've done exactly the same thing. I've added a texture mask and a texture photograph overlay. All of these images, in fact, have a similar effect. Even this image has got an overlay texture. If I open up my Layers panel and turn that off, I can turn that texture back on. What we are going to do in this exercise is we are going to find and download a texture photo, make some adjustments in Photoshop, and then bring that texture photo into Illustrator and apply it as a mask and as an overlay to make our digital work look a little less digital. The first thing that we need to do is find a texture. Now textures are easily found online, but I do want to highlight a couple of issues. I'm going to open up my browser, and here is the first website that I'd like to highlight. Textures.com is not free. There is, like so many other things these days, a paid yearly subscription. But what it gives you access to is a very well-organized collection of high-resolution photographs. Let me open up Concrete here, one of my favorite categories. You can see why this particular site is so valuable. Let me just click on this category here, Dirty Concrete. Here, if I scroll down, I'm going to click on this one. And what this is showing me is this particular photograph in all its different resolutions. The thing that makes this site so valuable is that it gives you these very high resolution photographs to work with. This level of resolution is very hard to come by unless you take the photos yourself. But you can see that there is a price to be paid here. But if you have the money, this is a great place to get your photo textures. But if you're working on more of a budget, let me suggest this site here, lostandtaken.com. Lost and Taken, as you can see, is organized very similarly to Textures.com with different image categories that you can choose. Here, I'm going to click on Concrete again. Now, LostandTaken.com is technically free. You do see some ads across the top here. Make sure you do not click on these because these premium images are not free. But we have some options down here. If I click on this one right here, for example, you can see that brings me to a page and it does give you a suggestion of paying for it, but you don't have to. I'm just going to download this one here for zero dollars and zero cents. I'm going to click on checkout. Now the one thing that a Lost and Taken does want is your information. I've been downloading from these people for many years and I've yet to receive an email from them other than the receipt for the image I'll download. Fill in my information. Click free download. Up pops my purchase confirmation page and now I'm just going to click on the actual file itself to download it and there is my high resolution photo. Now the last thing I want to mention is Google Image Search. I'm going to open up my search for concrete in Google Image Search. The thing I want to caution you about is using texture photographs that have very low resolution. For example, this one here is only 480 by 320. That is too small for us to use in most situations. If I click on the next one here, well, you can see this one is a much higher resolution. So no matter where you get your textures, just be aware of the pixel dimensions of that texture. I'm going to provide you with some textures to work with in this exercise. Let's take a look at some of these. In the textures for the demo folder, I'm going to click on the top one, press my spacebar to bring that up like so. You can see that this is a screen printed texture. This one is a rough concrete texture. Again, rough concrete. This is a texture photograph that has been processed in Photoshop so that we have some high contrast texture to work with. We'll be doing this in just a moment. 
we have this rough grainy texture. This is a TIFF file. This particular type of file allows us to do some interesting things within Illustrator. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Here is another very grungy concrete wall, an old color film texture, again processed, and finally we have a wood texture, again processed in Photoshop to accentuate this black and white contrast. What I'd like you to do, click on concrete06.jpg and we're going to open that in Photoshop. I could either hold my control button down or right click on the name concrete underscore 06 and choose open with Photoshop or I could also take this file and drag it over top of my dock and release over top Photoshop. What I'd like to do here is enhance the contrast between the light and dark pixels of this image. Primarily, this image is made up of mostly mid-gray pixels. Let's take a look at the distribution of those pixels by coming to the Image drop-down menu and selecting from this menu Adjustments, Levels. And what we see here is something called the histogram. This graph here represents the distribution of dark pixels on the left side and light pixels on the right side. This curve shows that most of the pixels of this image are mid-value grays. I want to enhance the contrast. And I can do that here by moving these sliders. I'm going to click on this left edge slider and that represents the dark pixels. And as I drag that closer to the center, more of those mid-value gray pixels are being made darker. On the other end, this white slider here represents the light pixels. And as I drag that closer to the center, more of the mid-value gray pixels are being made white. The closer I get these together, the more contrast I'm gonna get in my image. Now this is all a matter of what you want this texture to do. I don't mind what this texture is doing here. It's actually creating a, a lot of variability in the contrast. I have some density over here, but some real light spots over here. I generally like that in a texture. It gives me options to play with. Once I have that looking the way I feel I want it to look, I'm going to say OK. Now we're going to do one more thing with this image. Currently, this image is still a full color image. Even though it's made up of mostly gray pixels, you can still see the yellow and the blue pixels of the RGB within this texture. Let's reduce this down to strictly black and white by again coming to the image drop down menu and again coming to adjustments. And from this menu, we're going to come a little bit further down and select desaturate. This image is still an RGB image but we've just taken away all the saturation of those colored pixels. Now we could have done this process with almost any texture photo. For example, a photograph of wood grain processed in this way would give us very high contrast black and white pixels as well. We'll be utilizing this photograph as a mask in Illustrator. Let's save this modified image, but I don't want to save over top of the original image, concrete underscore 06. I'm going to come to the file drop-down menu and I'm going to choose save as, and I'm going to create a new version of this, clicking up here in the name field and adding on BW for black and white. And I'm going to say save. This is still a JPEG file and I'm just going to make sure that I keep the file size as large as possible. I'm going to say OK. I'm just going to come back over here to Illustrator. And I'm going to add this texture that we've just processed as a mask over top of this color composition. Currently, if I click on this, you can see that this is still a live color group. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see this a bit more clearly. I'm going to place that texture file that I've just created by coming to the File drop-down menu and selecting File, Place. And from this menu, I'm going to choose the concrete underscore 06 BW file and select Place. And there is my image placement tool, and I'm just going to click and drag out my image like that. Now, the way Illustrator is going to apply this texture as a mask over top of this image is by using the brightness values of the pixels of this image. You may have heard of this mnemonic, white reveals, black conceals. Wherever there are white pixels in this image, the masked image will show through. Wherever there are black pixels, the masked image will be hidden. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to click and drag this texture so that it aligns over top of the image that I want to mask. You'll notice now that the texture is hiding the image underneath. This next step will go a little bit easier if I can see the underlying image through the texture. I can do that very easily if I come over to my transparency panel and I'm going to change the blend mode from normal 
to multiply. I can now see the image and the texture at the same time. The reason I want to do that is I want to reposition my texture so it sits over top of my image in a way that it doesn't obscure the image too much. There I go. I want to keep the darker black pixels closer to the edge and the lighter white pixels closer to the center of my document. I see now that I may have made my texture a little bit too dark, but that's okay. I now want to apply this texture as a mask to my image. In order to do that, both the texture and the image need to be selected. In this case, it's easy. I can click and drag over top of them like this. I now have both of them selected. In my transparency panel, in my transparency panel, I'm going to click here where it says Make Mask. And you can see that the dark pixels of that texture have now masked out the image below. The issue I have with the uh, texture as I've applied it here is I think I've left too many dark pixels in my texture. If I was to redo this, I think I would reduce the number of dark pixels in the center of my image just so that I could see this a little bit better. If you want to make a modification to a mask after you've applied it, just select the masked object. And you can see the bounding box now includes the texture photograph as well. I'm going to come over here to the transparency panel. And you can see I now have two windows. The first is my object window, the object being masked. The second, though, is my mask window. And this is the object that is doing the masking, the original texture photo. If I want to make changes to that, I need to click within this mask window. And you'll see that it'll become highlighted. Now there's a little light blue area around this window. And now the texture photograph is selected. If I click and move that texture within my artboard, you can see how that updates like that. I can make some other changes here as well. For example, I could invert the mask. So rather than white reveals black conceals, I could do it as white conceals black reveals. Of course, with this particular texture, that doesn't give us a good effect. This clipping option really won't make any difference for us. This is only for textures that are a little bit smaller than your object. Of course, I can always come back here and click release on this transparency mask at any time, but I'm not going to do that right now. The last thing I want to mention here, though, is that if I want to start working with this object again, I do need to come out of the mask window and click in the object window. And now I can begin working with that shape again and not the mask. The last thing I want to do is add an overlay texture over top of my image. Let me show you how I'll do that. I'm going to close that transparency panel. I'm going to import another texture place. And this time I'm going to import Grunge Maps 0008 with all the peeling paint. Select place. And again, I have my image placement tool. And again, I'm just going to place that over top of my image like so. In my transparency panel, I'm going to change the blend mode. And remember, the blend mode is how we tell Illustrator to blend overlapping objects. Currently set to normal, this photograph is hiding everything underneath it. Let's try changing it to something else. I'm going to start with overlay. That's not bad. I can try some other ones, maybe multiply. Multiply is a little bit dark. Color burn. Oh, color burn is actually quite interesting. I kind of like what that does for the intensity of the overall color. Now, this blend mode is doing some interesting things. It's giving us some very interesting texture over top of the image itself. But we're also seeing it in areas that we don't want to see it, particularly where we've added the mask originally. I'm going to create one last shape to fix this. I'm going to come over here to my toolbox and I'm going to choose my rectangle tool. And this time I'm going to make a rectangle that is just slightly larger than the texture I've just put down. I'm going to change my fill color to white. It's very important that we change that fill color to white. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this rectangle and put it behind everything else by coming to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. And you can see what that has done. It's now hidden that new overlay texture. If I come back to my Layers panel, I can turn off that overlay texture like that. 